Well, I'm not going to be long. Worship was awesome. Amen? Yeah, amen? And sometimes when God is moving like that, we just need to flow with Him. Yeah. I think it's good. I think it's good. So, what should we talk about? Jesus. <laughs> that sounds good. Amen. Well, let's, uh, let's pray for just a, a quick moment here. And then I just kind of want to get to the heart of what I felt like the Lord was saying. And then we'll see what he does. How was that? All right. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you here. Lord, I just pray you'd anoint me to speak your word. That I would have your thoughts. And I pray, Father God, that, that we would leave here tonight encouraged, enriched in you, Lord. We thank you, God, that you are good. In Jesus' name, everyone said? Amen. Amen. A to the man. All right. Well, um, how many have had a good day today? We still have, what, half of our summer left? Something like that. Um, how many have had a good summer? COVID and all. Uh, anybody in here get the COVID? Anybody uh, die in here or anything? No? Okay. We look like we're all doing pretty good. Um, let's, uh, let's go to the Bible. That's a good place to go to. Let's go to Matthew 16, 18. If you've been with us the last few weeks, I've been on a series on Sundays on the ecclesia. Say ecclesia. Ecclesia. Remember, you got to say it like you're an Italian. The Ecclesia. Hey, I know those guys. The Mennings. And wow. You haven't changed a bit. <laughs> they used to be part of our church back in 90s. Wow. Not the 1890s. I'm not that old. The, the 1990s. Yeah, we had a lot of good times back then. That was, those were good days. These are good days. Um, so let's go to Matthew 16. Again, we won't be long tonight. I just want to give a couple thoughts, and we'll just see what God has for us. Matthew 16, 18. Matthew 16, 18, and it says, this is where Peter was talking and the, the whole discourse about who is Jesus. And Peter said, what did Peter say? He said, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. How many know that Jesus is the Christ? You know, there's the name Jesus. There's a lot of people that have the name Jesus, especially if you get down in Miami or something. Right? Jesus. But when something happens to you that Jesus, all of a sudden, you realize that Jesus isn't just a figure, he isn't someone in history, but he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen? How many of you have had that experience? That's right. Here it says, here it says, he answered and said, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen? That's a strong word right there from Jesus. You know, how many years has gone by since he made that statement? Has the church faded away? No. no. We're still here. Jeff, we're still here. We've been through a lot. We've seen people uh, in Africa. We've seen people in the church. Uh, there was uh, lots of, of uh, death that has occurred because of their faith. We see it in the Middle East. We see all over the place where even under persecution, the church has thrived. Not just survived, 
it's thrived. It has thrived. Amen? Why? Because Jesus himself said, even the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Who's the church? Is the church a building? Okay, my first message, if you remember, I talked about the purpose of the church. You guys remember that? The purpose of the church. What are the purposes of the church? Do you guys remember? What are the purposes of the church? Give me one. Be a light. That's good. To reach out. All right. What's another one? What? To disciple. Do you think that's important? It is? Good. To disciple. Evangelism. To evangelize, to disciple, to have fellowship. How many enjoy fellowship? We have our cell groups, what we use to uh, disciple people, we use them to fellowship and to win people. Amen? And the church is also, it, it, it exists to worship. This afternoon, in here this evening, we worshiped the Lord. How many felt the presence of God? Amen. Man, discipleship, evangelism, fellowship, worship, ministry, and the purpose of the church, we were to be like light, to be salt. What else? To be like leaven or yeast. Has anyone ever made bread? You're winking. No, never? You've never made bread? Anybody ever make bread? Oh, look at it. Now we have the hands up. What happens if you make bread without yeast? It doesn't rise. And what happens if just a little bit of yeast gets in your dough and you let that dough sit for a while? That is what the word church is all about. Church was never to be just a religious sect that, you know, kind of hang together. But the church, it means the called out ones in Greek, right? Ekklesia, the called out ones. But sometimes we jump on that and we say, oh, we should be like, you know, the Amish and be sheltered away somewhere. It's not at ex- it, it, it all what that means. We are to be in our life separate from the world, but we are to be deeply ingrained into the community. Amen? And we are like that yeast that everywhere we go, we, <laughs> God strategically places you in the right place and like yeast, you get into that job and pretty soon you affect the entire corporation. That's being the church. Amen? Amen. Well, you know, God called me into, you know, just manufacturing. I just go there. I get my paycheck. Well, that's too bad because you've missed out on what it means to be the church. God placed you there to be yeast. And he placed you there to affect everyone in that company. Amen? Amen? How do you do that? You be light. You fall in love with Jesus. You spend time with Him. And it's interesting, if you read something in the morning, a little scripture, how many have had this happen? You read that little bit of scripture, and guess what happens later that day? What you read becomes food to someone in the company. Amen? I sat with a guy the other day. He was very depressed. And uh, he felt like life was failing him. Everything was going astray. And uh, before I went there, I just sat down. I flipped my Bible open. I felt like I was supposed to go to, to Joshua. I start reading the first chapter of Joshua. I had no idea what I was going to encounter that day. I get to this guy's house, and I sit down, and he pours out his heart to me. And you know what? I thought, you got to be kidding me. I just sat down. I read the first chapter of Joshua to him. He's like, oh, praise God, I've heard from him today. (laughs) It's being leaven, amen, or being yeast. It's not complicated. So the purpose of the church is to be light, to be an influence, say influence, everywhere you go. Does anyone in here ever go anywhere? Scott, have you ever been anywhere? (laughs) If you just look around, 
and say, God, give me one person today, guess what he'll give you? Probably two. But he will. My grandfather was pastor here way back, uh, uh, hundreds of years ago, back when David Tangwall was a kid. <laughs> and he would pray and he would ask God for one every day. And he would take his lunch or he'd go out for breakfast and he would drive around Rice Lake and he would look for the one. And you know, God was so good that he always gave him at least one. Isn't that something? He'd think, man, I didn't find anybody today. Nobody talked to me at the restaurant. He'd be going home and some guy would be walking. He'd pull over and say, hey, what's going on in your life? The guy's like, what? And next thing you know, they're in a conversation about politics or who knows what or sports, and it ends up he's given him the gospel of Christ. Why? Because all he had to do is be like yeast. Amen? Yeast finds a way in, and yeast knows how to multiply. Amen? So sometimes we need to be just willing to be used. So ekklesia, ekklesia in the Greek means to be called out. But ecclesia is an old Roman Greek term, and you can look it up. There's a great book by uh, uh, Dr. Savoso. He wrote the book Ecclesia. And then there's other guys like Derek Prince and, and many others that have done tremendous, a tremendous job on this word of ecclesia. And what it is, is they had, uh, at that time, they would send out ships and they would conquer different distant lands. The Rome, Romans would do that. You guys remember that back then? Yeah? They would send out, uh, cap, uh, not captains, but admirals, and they would commission the fleet, and they'd go out and they would conquer a land. The admiral was. Isn't it interesting that the admiral that they would commission to go conquer that land and to set up, a new Roman government in that new conquered land, that admiral was called an apostolos. Say apostolos. That was a Greek Roman term that was the term apostle. It gives you the idea why Jesus used the term apostle. Because he wanted to conquer and then he wanted to change culture. The agent that they used to begin to change the culture is they would assemble together the body and they would equip them and they would commission that body of believers, that body of people, and they would go in and work with the apostolos to set up and change the culture. That structure, those people that worked with the apostolos, those people were called the ecclesia the church. So it wasn't a Christian term when it was first used, but Jesus said that's the perfect term to try to fit into what I'm trying to do around the world. We're going we're gonna to go into workplaces and set up the ecclesia. We're going to go into this market and set up the ecclesia. We're going to go into the education world and set up the ecclesia. We're going to go into Hollywood, and we're going to be like, like yeast, and we're going to set up the ecclesia. We're going to get into the news media. Ooh, the gates of hell will not... Oh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> and the ecclesia can thrive even at CNN or other places that don't seem to... I'll leave that. But anyways, you can't stop it once it starts. And that's why Rome, later on, when the church began to blossom and the signs and wonders were everywhere and people knew how to love each other and, and the, the glory of God was spreading and it was going around the world and the Roman Empire tried to quench it with, with uh, violence and it wouldn't shut it down. It only caused it to spread. You are not just people in a religion you are the ecclesia, and you're going to change the world. Amen? Amen. 
When I began to see my workplace as the ecclesia, as the commission, as my, my place to go and change, I don't have to preach over the intercom. I just have to be kind to people. I have to have coffee breaks. You know that if you have coffee with someone, a third person will show up called the Holy Spirit. If I go have coffee with someone there at the company, there I am, I'm sitting there, Joe sits down, I'm going to leave that seat open. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is working in my life to try, try and reach Joe. Amen? Why? Because I'm the ecclesia. How many here are part of the ecclesia? That's why when people call going to church, going to church, they fail, they miss the revelation of what the church is. We gather because we need fellowship. We need to encourage each other. We need to share the God stories. We need to share the scripture. We need to worship God Almighty first. Amen? But the ecclesia, the body, is to permeate culture and to be the change agent of Almighty God to get into every facet of the planet. Amen? How many want to be God's change agent? I do. Say amen. amen. I'm trying to go fast. Then I spoke last week, I spoke about the authority of the church. Say authority. authority. You know, that the church doesn't just go on its own. We actually have authority. Amen? We do. We have authority. We can actually pray in agreement and change things on this planet. Well, I don't know. Well, then don't pray with me. You ever, you ever been around someone that just is like, just, you ever, you ever eat soggy cereal? And it's just, it just like falls out of your mouth. Some people pray like that. They don't even know they have authority from God. Because when I'm in Christ and under Christ, I have the same authority that Jesus Christ himself had. It's the same authority. I give you authority to trample on. Da, 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 da. All authority was given to him. And then when we got into Christ, he released authority upon the ecclesia. Amen? You look at the authority of Christ, you look at the authority of the church, it's the same. And when you pray that way, it shakes heaven and it changes earth. Yeah. Say, we're the ecclesia. That's right. Galatians 4.1, it said this. It says, if you're the son of an heir, but you're too young to know it, you're the same as a slave. You don't know the difference. You don't know who you are. And Galatians says... That when that child gets older, he realizes he's the son of the heir. And that's the way the church has been for many years. We just think we're just the same as some poor beggar. And all of a sudden, we have a revelation. And we see that we don't just exist to exist. We're not just part of a religious club. But we are the ecclesia. Amen? Does anybody get that? That's so powerful. That's so powerful. All right, so I need to wrap up. I promise you it wouldn't be long tonight. I'm just getting started. Just another 45 minutes. But the ecclesia is so important that God didn't just, He didn't just commission you. He didn't just give you a set of instructions. But he also gave you the Holy Spirit to go with you. Amen? The ecclesia was commissioned by God, given authority by God, and then given the power of the Spirit by God. How many want the authority of God? How many want the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? Amen. We have... We've had a lot of wonderful miracles here through the years. I mean, lots of fun things. We've had metal disappear. We've had uh, bones. I mean, just crazy things. Dental miracles. 
And, and then we have someone that, that comes that hasn't been a part of that, and they're like, well, I don't think God does that anymore. You ever experience that? It's because they haven't been exposed to the authority nor of the dunamis power of God. As a child of God, it is our right to walk in the authority and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? I, I was asked to speak at a conference in, um, it was down south, and when I went there, there were a lot of religious people, wonderful people, but they had never, a lot of them have never been exposed to the power of the Holy Spirit. And they asked me to teach a class on uh, the history of the Holy Spirit and the moves of God. And they had all these breakout sessions. I'm just going to tell you what happened. They had all these breakout sessions, how to have ins better insurance in your church as a pastor, uh, tax principles for pastors, all these breakout sessions. There was probably maybe three, four hundred people there, maybe five hundred. And about 70% of them went to my class. There was no room to sit. They were, standing, they were standing in the halls, and I simply taught on the history of the Holy Spirit and how it's available today. And people were so hungry. And afterwards, we broke out and started praying for people. People were slain out under the power of God. People wouldn't leave my class. The organizer of the event, I, I kept saying, you guys need to go back to the main session. It's starting, it's starting, go. And they were crying out to God on their knees, saying, we want more. And they wouldn't leave my class. I got in trouble. <laughs> it had nothing to do with me. But someone gave them some hope that religion isn't, or Christianity isn't just religion, but our church the, the church of Christ around the world has authority and has the power of the Spirit. That gets me excited. Here's, here's a fun one. So we get done at that meeting. And um, even in the, the main session, it was fun because once it broke out there, it began to break out there. And I didn't have to do anything. People were just like wild, excited, pressing into God, crying out. You know, people were on the altar. So we get done and we go to lunch. How many like lunch? We go to lunch and we go to a cafe. I just taught on this. You can be used of God. How many want to be used of God? So I go to this Chinese restaurant and we're there and we sit down and I just taught on all this stuff. And these people are with me and this lady comes out to wait on us, and she has a brace on her wrist. So what do we do? What should you do? If we're truly believers, if we really believe this word, how many believe this? Then sometimes we need to take a risk, even if we look silly. Amen? I would rather miss it 99 times and nail it once, but at least I tried. And then I got to see the miracle. Well, I get all, you know, we get there and the lady comes out and she walks away and uh, I think she brought out waters or something. And I looked at those guys and I said, hey, I said, why don't you do what we talked about today? And they all looked at me and they said, no, <laughs> you do it. I said, no, do it. Who cares? Just love her to Jesus. Give your testimony. Pray for her wrist. Do something. So she came back, and uh, I'm looking at them, and they're looking at me. And I'm looking at her, and she thought we were probably nuts. So finally I said, hey, I said, what'd you do to your wrist? And she said, um, she said, uh, I have really bad corporal tunnel, and without this wrist I cannot work. I can't work. I said, well, that's, that's too bad. I said, I'm a minister, and I love Jesus. She goes, oh, I'm not a Christian. I'm, I'm kind of a little bit Buddhist. I said, that's okay. I said, let me see your wrist. So she gives me her wrist, and I said, I'll just do this real quick. I'm going to pray for you, and Jesus is going to touch you. Now, do I know her? What does it matter? Right? We, Satan comes and 
throws a cobweb in, in your brain in two seconds. You know what I mean? What does it matter? I'm still nice. I take your hand. If it doesn't work, we'll just tip her a little more, you know? So I said, give me your hand. She gives me her hand, and I put my hand on top of hers, and I said, Lord Jesus, I said, I know you love her. I said, I just rebuke that pain in the name of Jesus Christ, and Lord, I just pray you just touch her in Jesus' name. She takes her hand back, and she goes, thank you. And I said, hold I said, try it. So she goes like this. She goes, kind of like smirky. She goes. <laughs> I said, one to ten, what was it? She said, an eight or a nine. I said, okay, what is it now? She said, probably a three. I said, that's not good enough. Give me your hand. I put, now she's, we got her full attention. <laughs> Real gingerly, put her hand in mine. I put my hand on top of there. I said, I rebuke the pain in the name of Jesus, any infirmity affecting her, I command it to leave. And Lord, I pray that you'd completely heal her now in Jesus' name. Who's the healer? Jesus. Jesus. Who's the one that has to step out in faith? Jesus. You, me, us. <laughs> Put my hand on her, and I said, now try it. And she goes like this, and she steps back, and she goes, oh my goodness, and she starts crying at the table. Now we got her. She was crying, so she turned and she went in the back room. If we're just a religious organization, we have nothing but knowledge, information. But if we're truly the ecclesia, and when I come into that awakening, just like I talked about the, the pauper versus the son of the heir, if I truly have authority, if I truly am commissioned by Jesus, if my faith can grow by stepping out and seeing results, and I step out again and it grows even more, if I truly believe that, things should happen. She took our order before I prayed for her. But she started afterwards, she started crying, she went back. I didn't see her for some time. She came back without a brace. I said, you took your brace off. Now I'm messing with her. She goes, I did. I said, can you try it for me? She goes, I have zero pain. I said, who did that? And she goes, Jesus. <laughs> so we got to pray with her. What difference does it make if I, if I get embarrassed and if it, my faith doesn't, isn't strong enough that day or something? Who knows? But she was healed and she met Jesus Christ. We are the ecclesia. Amen? I want to give you one scripture in closing here. I, I could, yeah. The ecclesia, we're going to go into one more phase of this next time I preach. It won't be Sunday, but I think the following or something. Um, and that is understanding the, the commissioning and the empowerment of the church. And I want to see everyone in that meeting, we're going to receive a new infilling of the Spirit. We need it. Amen? We need it. We go around the planet. We've preached in a lot of countries. We've seen God do wonderful miracles. And people say it all the time. It, shouldn't, it doesn't happen here, brother. It just happens over there. Knock it off. We need to open up our faith here. Amen? We need to be the, the yeast everywhere we go. If, if not miracles, then at least love. Amen? Love someone to Jesus. Be a witness. Here's one thing that the Lord wanted me to share before I closed. And how many know Apostle Paul? Apostle Paul, he went through some things, right? He was saved. And then he suffered a lot of persecution. And later on, he went into prison. How many here have ever... Well, don't raise your hand. How many should be in prison? Just point at someone. I'd like you to turn to Ephesians 6.20. In Acts, we see that Paul... Go to Ephesians, we're going to close. But we see in the book of Acts, the, what is it, 27 and 28 are the last two chapters, I think, right? And you know, there's no the end at the end of Acts. That's because the end hasn't come. The same Jesus Christ that commissioned the early church is the same one that commissioned you today. 
Here is Paul. Paul was imprisoned. He was starting churches everywhere. He believed what Jesus said, so he did it. Later, he gets arrested. He's, he's put into chains. He's in his cell for a long time, writing, discipling people from his cell. And, and later, God opens a door where he could go on these missionary trips, even though he's still a prisoner. And on one ship, they're, they're in a terrible storm. Here's Paul, a prisoner in chains, and conditions weren't great. Hardly any food, terrible weather, terrible time. He's a prisoner. And, and in that storm, he goes and he prays and he says, Lord, I don't know what to do. We're going to die if you don't help us. Remember that? That storm lasted for a long, long, long time. Many, many, many days. And an angel of God appears to him. How many would like that? See, he didn't throw a fit. He didn't get mad. He called upon the Lord. The Lord sent a messenger to speak to him, to give him hope. God tells him exactly what to do. And so he goes and he, see, he's just being the church. He's affecting even the guards. They loved him. They, they loved Paul. Everything he said, it was like life came out of him and hope out of his mouth. And even the centurion guard that was over him, Paul won his heart. And he said, this is what the, the Lord said. You need to do this, this, and this. And they did exactly what he said. He said, you're going to run the ship aground. It's going to break up. But not one person, if you do what I say, not one person will die. And they run the ship aground. They do everything Paul said. They get out of the water. They crawl up on shore. They're cold. They're hungry. It's, they've been in a storm. And, and the, then we see that that's when Paul was bitten by the snake. And what did he do? He shook it off. Why? Because he believed that he was the ecclesia commissioned by God and had authority and had power on his life. The, the tribesmen seen it. They thought he was going to die. And he shook it off, and he didn't die, so now they called him a god. Then he shook that off. And he said, it wasn't God, it wasn't, I'm not a god. He said, I serve the God, amen? And you see, he won a whole island to Jesus Christ, even in the midst of a disastrous time. We're living in a disastrous time right now. All the COVID things, all the riots, all those types of things. We need to shake off the junk and get back to being light be in salt, and be in yeast. Amen? Here's Paul. This is my last scripture, and I promise I'm closing. You guys are ready to, you know, sometimes you're done before I am. Paul, Ephesians 6.20 says this, For I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Paul, even in chains, still was light, was salt, and was yeast even in prison and here's the word i want to give you about the church is sometimes we feel that all the circumstances in our life have to be perfect before we can step out and be the man of god god called us to be paul didn't wait paul even though he was in chains he never asked for chains but even in chains he was salt he was like and he was yeast amen Stop waiting till your life is perfect. Stop waiting till you're in your prime with God. Stop waiting until you fasted 40 days. Stop waiting until you feel goosebumps. Stop waiting and just be a man and a woman of God. Amen? Even in your chains. I'd like you to stand up. Who are we? Ecclesia. Say that with an Italian accent. Ecclesia. Amen. So, Monty, are you the Ecclesia? Are you anointed? Are you empowered with the Holy Spirit? Sometimes we want a prophet to call us out. I've had that, you know. And that's wonderful. It, but those moments are more about us awakening to what already is. Do you see what I'm saying? We need to know who we are, what the Bible says. We are commissioned by God to be light, to be salt, 
to be yeast and to permeate culture, to be the change agents of culture. Amen? The church is more than just a fellowship. The church is God's change agent for the world. And God is released in a revival culture today like never before, but He doesn't want us to just get caught up in the, the shaking and the goosebumps and the Holy Ghost and all that stuff. We want that. We're, gonna, we're always going to be that. Amen? But it's so much bigger than that. Those just get you revved up to go back outside. Amen? And to carry that anointing wherever we go. We are the ecclesia. And God didn't make a mistake when He called you. The Bible has no exceptions. He doesn't say you're empowered, but you're not. Well, I don't have hair like this guy, or I don't have that. No, I am called of God, and I am anointed. The Bible said that even when you're called in front of people, He said, don't worry what you're going to say, that God Himself will give you the words to say. Amen? We're the ecclesia. I'd like you to close your eyes. What chains are you holding on to that you're using as an excuse to stay back instead of advancing the kingdom of God in your workplace, in your school, in your community? What chains are you using as an excuse? I know that's a strong word, but what chains are we using as an excuse to hold back and not to be used like God called us? To be used. Maybe it's, maybe it's, a, it's an addiction. or Maybe it's, it's some bondage. And you think, man, I need to get all these things right before I can be who God called me to be. Maybe we need to be who God called us to be. And those addictions will break off and become nothing but a memory. Amen? <laughs> what chains? What chains? I remember I said one time, man, when I get in my prime with God, then I'll do those things. And the Lord immediately rebuked me, and He said, you need to be in your prime right now, boy. Right now. What chains are we using as an excuse to hold us back? Woo! All right, put your hand on somebody. I want everybody to pray for somebody. In the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Father, we pray for fresh fire to come. We pray for fresh authority. Father, we pray for an awakening. An awakening, Lord. A revelation of who you are and who you said we are. A revelation of who you are and who you said we are. I pray for a fresh awakening, Lord. I pray for fresh fire. I pray for fresh understanding of our authority. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am a light. I am salt. I am yeast. And I am called to permeate my society with the love of Jesus, with the hope of the gospel, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Who's going to be the, the church? Amen. All right. Amen. So I want to I want to give you a job. I want to give you an assignment. Is anyone going anywhere tonight? What? There you go. Where else are you going? Where else are you going? Come on, where else are you going? Anyone else going out to eat? Man, what a dull bunch. All right. All right. Lord, I pray you bless them. Father, help us to get excited for you. Lord, that you handpicked us, God. I pray you bless them wherever they go, Lord. Let them be a light. Let them be, Father, let them be yeast. Let them be salt wherever they go. In the mighty name of Jesus, say amen. amen. Come on, say it again. Amen. 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 God bless you.